You can think of nucleic acids like your home office. Your computer stores information that you, the user, can access whenever you need it. We need a hard copy to send a message to the printer. The printer then decodes that message and produces a tangible, physical product. Well, nucleic acids were just like that. I'm sure you've heard of DNA before. That's short for deoxyribonucleic acid. Say it with me. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Well, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, is much like the computer in our analogy. It stores heredity information that cells need to function. You can also think of DNA like the boss. It tells the employees what to do, and boy, do they do them. If DNA is the boss, ribonucleic acid are the minions, the employees, the pawns, the worker bees. They take the information that DNA has created, the blueprints it has drawn up, in the fact, and then they take it to the factory. Literally, they take it to a factory. That factory is known as a ribosome. The ribosome uses some different kind of RNA in order to piece together the parts of the blueprint and making building blocks of all cells. Proteins. What do we say proteins were made of? Well, the essential building blocks of all proteins are amino acids. RNA tells the ribosome what, in what order to connect the amino acids. Do you remember what that bond is called between am amino acids? Well, if you guessed the peptide bond, you were right. Amino acids are floating around inside of the cell all the time. And the ribosome uses the information from the RNA to create peptide bonds between amino acids, linking them together to make proteins. And then the proteins travel around the work and do the, do the work of the cell. Pretty cool, huh? Well, if you didn't get all the details of that, don't worry too much. We're going to go over in a lot more detail in, in the future slides. Okay, this is the big picture. This is where we're going. So if you miss the details, don't worry too much. This is a graph of what it actually looks like. DNA goes through a process known as transcription. If you've ever taken a foreign language class, that's exactly what you're doing. You're transcribing one language into another. In fact, scribe means to, to write and trans means to change. Transcription produces an mRNA, the messenger RNA, and that's exactly what it does. It sends a message from the DNA to the ribosome. However, there's one more step. The messenger RNA, using the information from DNA, encodes another molecule, which makes a reverse copy of itself. That molecule is known as transfer RNA, or tRNA. The transfer RNA is transferred to the ribosome, where the amino acids are linked together to form proteins in a process known as translation. Okay, well, that was the big picture. Let's take a step back. What the heck are these things he keeps talking about? What in the world are nucleic acids? Well, nucleic acids are nothing more than monomers of nucleotides. Remember that monomers are like letters that make up a word. If monomers are the letters, then the polymers are the words. Just like proteins are made up of many monomers of amino acids, nucleic acids are made up of many monomers of nucleotides. Okay, well, what's a nucleotide? A nucleotide always, always, always has three components. One, it always has a phosphate group. And you can see that here as a phosphorus atom attached to four oxygen atoms. Two, it has a pentose sugar group. Now, that sounds kind of confusing, but really all, all it is is it's defined as a circular five-sided sugar. And you can see that in yellow here. The sugar, this sugar specifically, is called deoxyribose, hence deoxyribonucleic acid. And three, a nitrogenous base. There are four different types of nitrogenous base in DNA, and this is where the code is stored. The arrangement of these bases determines the physical characteristics. You might know these bases by their letters, A, C, T, and G. Of the four nitrogenous bases, they form two different families. These two families are determined by their shapes. Pyrimidines are the smaller of the two and include a single ring of six atoms. Now these atoms include carbons and nitrogens. Purines are their bigger cousin. They also have a ring of six atoms, but attached to that ring is another ring, making a sort of figure eight. So you can see that the purine is basically physically bigger than the pyrimidine. And there are two pyrimidines, thymine and cytosine 
where there's also two purines, adenine and guanine. Adenine links up with thymine, and cytosine links up with guanine. In other words, you always see a purine with a pyrimidine. They always link up. Remember, nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. Here's a picture of a segment of a nucleotide, DNA to be specific. Just like proteins are linked together via peptide bond, nucleotides are linked together by another bond. This bond is known as a phosphodiester linkage. Specifically, this phosphodiester linkage is a covalent bond between two nucleotides. It's where a phosphate combines with a sugar, which in turn combines with a phosphate, which in turn combines with this, another sugar, and so on. This creates what is known as the nucleic backbone. This backbone is the same for both DNA and RNA. So if you look at the ends of, of this molecule, you notice that there is a phosphate on one end and a sugar on the other end. This gives nucleic acids like DNA and RNA a direction. Starting with the phosphate group and moving towards the sugar is also known as having a 5' prime to 3' prime directionality. Deoxyribonucleic acid is commonly known as DNA, and it forms a double helix. This is a two-sided structure that forms a spiraling ladder shape that sort of resembles rotini pasta. The sides of the ladder are each made of the nucleic backbone. These two sides are combined by rungs which make the ladder complete. These rungs are formed when a purine bonds to a pyrimidine via hydrogen bond. Even more specifically, an adenine binds with a thymine and a cytosine binds with a guanine, A with T and C with G. It is precisely this configuration that allows DNA to unzip and replicate itself. When it unzips, it is exposed to other nucleotides floating around in the nucleus and attaches to create complementary nu nucleotides. They form phosphodiester bonds between themselves, in essence forming another copy of the molecule. Pretty cool, huh? DNA is also said to have an anti-parallel configuration. Now, this doesn't mean that they're perpendicular. What it means is that one of the sides of the ladder, remember that is the nucleic backbone, runs from a 5' prime to a 3' prime direction. In other words, from the phosphate group to the sugar group, from the left to the right. But the other side of the ladder runs the opposite direction from left to right. That is, from a 3' prime to a 5' prime direction. In other words, from the sugar group towards the phosphate group. And that is known as anti-parallel. So you might be wondering, why do pyrimidines and purines always combine together in nucleic acids? Well, I know these things keep me up at night, so I can only assume that they keep you up at night as well. Well, you can see from this slide that the purines can't pair with other purines because there simply isn't enough space. Likewise, the pyrimidines can't pair with each other because there isn't enough space. But the purine-pyrimidine combination is just right. Just like Goldilocks. Okay. So we know that A's and T's combine and C's and G's combine in DNA. Well, guess what? The hard work's over. There's really only one difference between DNA and RNA. In the case of RNA, adenine doesn't bind with thiamine. Instead, adenine binds with another pyrimidine known as uracil, or U. Okay, I lied. There is one more difference between RNA and DNA. DNA is double-stranded, meaning it has two strands, and RNA is single-stranding. It has one strand. Now, this is pretty cool. RNA is thought to be the first self-replicating molecule on Earth. Now, did it happen spontaneously in the ocean, or get hurtled here from an asteroid? Well, who knows. However, it is the simplest self-replicating molecule that we know. And to my knowledge, no person has been able to recreate the early Earth conditions and have this molecule spontaneously generate but it is possible. So if you're looking for a way to get the Nobel Prize, this would be a great way. As I mentioned before, there are two different types of RNA, messenger RNA and transfer RNA. Both are single-stranded and have uracil and no thymine. mRNA is copied by the DNA in the nucleus in a process known as transcription. And the code with which the A's, C's, G's, and U's, yes, U's, remember uracil, are in order 
on the mRNA determines the eventual amino acid sequence of the proteins. However, the last part of the job is goes to the tRNA, the transfer RNA. It takes the message from the mRNA and plugs into the ribosomes, creating the chain of amino acids, which link together by peptide bonds forming the polypeptide chains. The proteins float around the cells, carrying out nearly all the important functions of the cells, tissue, organs, organ systems, and organisms. It's simply magic. Well, this has been our short journey into what nucleic acids are. Join us next time for lipids.